Yeah, a warm welcome from my side as well. Um, my name is Anja. I'm head of research with MICT, which is a, a German a Berlin based media assistance organization that is in charge for um, organizing and hosting this year's um, FOMIS Symposium. Symposium. Um, and I'm on behalf in charge. Um, so it's very good to see you all in person after so many months of intense preparation. Thank you for coming from close and far from my heart. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the uh, for, uh, Forum Media and Development, it's a, a network of uh, German organizations that um, are engaged in international media assistance and the uh, Forum Symposium is an annual gathering where we um, explore a topic and discuss a topic that we select as being very relevant, pressing, timely. And each year it's a different organization in charge of organizing the former symposium and this year it's MICT. So, but um, the former symposium is um, a truly networked event. So all of the organizations that you see here have been, have participated in organizing um, the former symposium throughout the past uh, 10 months or so. And each of these organizations is also hosting uh, a slot, a session, a topic in the next two days. Um, so, and if you're curious to know which, which topic, um, you'll find that information in your program. Uh, I want to uh, thank the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung again for um, financing this, this form of symposium uh, generously. And I want to extend my gratitude to uh, Katharina Naumann and um, Sophie Janusz from uh, Katharina Naumann from, from the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung and Sophie Janusz from Kamiko, our, our coordinator of the former network, who have um, helped me and uh, easily friendly throughout the supported me throughout the past months um, thank you so much for your help thank you so much um, i also want to uh, thank the foreign office for uh, providing additional financial support um, for for this conference as well as the bnz the um, federal ministry for economic economic cooperation that also provided means for transportation and accommodation. Now, um, let me have a few words also on this year's topic. <clears throat> Issues with trust. Uh, why did we think this is relevant or pressing? Now, one reason, and that's a bit my reason, I have to say, is that we as international media organizations are traditionally very focused on um, the production side of media, news and information. So we are traditionally interested in um, how news and information is produced and disseminated. We are interested in journalistic production, journalistic practices, journalism ethics. We're interested also in the quality of content. We are interested in media regulation, policies and media structures that emerge from this policy, business aspects, viability, etc. All of this is in one way or the other related to producing news and information. And we quite rarely actually pay attention to, quest to the question what people actually make from that information, how they make sense from this information that is presented to them by the news. How do they select and assess information what how do people for instance in Peshawar or Accra or Mosul select and assess and judge and rate what is presented to them by the media normally this is not in our focus that's very normal it's just not our field of intervention yet on a closer look we have to admit that we have a lot of strong silent assumptions actually about this type of media behavior, namely assumptions touching upon trust and related concepts such as credibility. So if we, for instance, are concerned about misinformation or media capture or partisanship, we are so partly because we believe that people actually too easily uh, believe 
also what is presented to them to the, in, in the news, that they are maybe too trusting. If we strengthen or support um, ethical journalism or constructive journalism, we also do so based on the assumption that this kind of journalism is perceived and valued by the audiences as trustworthy type of journalism. And none of these assumptions is necessarily wrong, but the point I'm making here is that we do not know if these assumptions are right because they rarely undergo scrutiny. So this conference is a little bit about uh, providing opportunity also for scrutiny. For instance, tomorrow afternoon, <clears throat> we talk about community media in Africa, which is commonly uh, considered a very trustworthy type of media. But here in this conference, we don't take that for granted, but instead raise the question, is that actually true? Is that proximity necessarily and always under all circumstances translating into trust. Um, or tomorrow morning, we raise the question, if trust is actually a universal concept or need, does it need to be contextualized as so many other concepts as well? Um, <clears throat> so we try to think a little bit out of the box in the coming two days. Um, the second reason that I want to bring forward here is that the importance and relevance of trust is actually increased or increasing with increasing levels of uncertainty. And I want to quote uh, um, Koring and Mattis here, that's two scholars that uh, do research in trust, who say trust is perhaps the most important mechanism in helping people to deal with the risk of an open future. So in unstable situations, they say, trust provides guidance and allows to maintain capacity to act, like Handlungsfähigkeit. Now, international media assistance is obviously taking place in situations that are characterized by high levels of instability, uncertainty, be that caused by poverty or political change or by armed violence. Um, so that's why trust for, for us as international media assistance organizations is very important always. The fact that we opted to select it this year of all years has to do obviously with a pandemic that introduced unprecedented levels of uncertainty, I think in all of our lives across the globe. So probably everyone in this room has asked herself or her, himself at some point, whom shall I trust? in this situation? Who is to be trusted in judging and understanding the current situation and what comes next? So this is kind of indicating, these kind of questions indicate crisis and high risk, or as Koring and Mattes put it, I quote, when there's nothing at stake, trust is not needed. This is, however, not to say that trust necessarily increases or de decreases with crisis, it's just uh, gaining more importance and its uh, and patterns of trust are changing. So this is why we have quite a few panels throughout the uh, next two days that investigate how politi political context is shaping media perception and trust. For instance, we look uh, into this morning into um, media perception in Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Congo, as well as Russia and Turkey in the afternoon. Tomorrow morning, Christoph Spurg will tell us about information processing in Niger. And in the afternoon, filmmakers from Ghana will share insight about audience responses to fiction and documentary film they gathered on public screenings. And there's also a number of, uh, of uh, um, panels that investigate the question how trust relationships between media and audience can be strengthened and sustained. So we have guests from Kenya and Serbia and Kyrgyzstan today on that question. And tomorrow we will, uh, um, uh, no, uh, yeah, so we have uh, um, that in the afternoon today and tomorrow. So. And finally, I want to highlight a little bit of an offsite topic that made its way into the center of our discussions uh, on quite high speed. Um, and I'm talking about the relationships that we as media assistance organizations have with our partners in the so-called field. 
this has become uh, a very um, uh, um, this has gained a lot of attention in our preparations turned out to be a pressing topic um uh, touching upon questions such as how is actually trust gained between us and our partners how it is sustained and what role for trust also in in, in regard to sustainability of the projects we're running um so i think these the the uh, relationships we have with our partners can be very complicated i think also dependency is high on both ends uh, so I'm very excited to hear how this is being discussed tomorrow, including a session also on uh, the new competition competition that we find ourselves in with um, uh, 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 media assistance coming from China and Russia. So it seems China is in massively investing in media education and journalism education in the global south. And we are asking, um, or we're discussing um, journalists that participated in, in those trainings and programs, if China is actually perceived as a trustworthy carrier of journalism ethics. So I'm very excited to uh, dive into broad and deep discussions with all of you in the coming two days on these issues and others. And um, I want to thank you for your attention and we, go on with the keynotes. Thank you so much.